Okay, next up is something called the modulus argument form of writing a complex number. Um, this is really similar to what we've been doing so far. It's just a different way of presenting or writing a complex number. So I've said here, if we let r equal the modulus of z, in other words, r is the length of this line that we've got here, and theta equal the argument of z, the argument of some complex number, which is this angle here, can you think of a way of expressing z in terms of just r and theta? So we need to figure out what x and y are, because normally that's what z is equal to. It's normally z equals x plus i, y. So if we can change x and y into something in terms of r and theta, then we've been able to express it in terms of just its modulus and its argument. Well, looking at this triangle, we should be able to tell, just concentrating on this part and this part here, there is a relationship between x and r and theta. And what that is, is that we know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is r. So multiplying both sides by r gives us that r cos theta is equal to x. And I'm going to do a similar thing in red, but just using r, theta, and y from this right-angled triangle that we've got. So if x was to do with cos theta, we should now be able to think that y is going to be to do with sine theta. So sine theta is the opposite, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is r. So r sine theta is equal to y, meaning that if z is equal to x plus i y, I can take x and I can replace it with r cos theta, and I can take y and I can replace it with r sine theta, and then all I really need to do here is I can factorise out the fact that there is an r in both of them, so z is equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta. And this thing here is the modulus argument form, sometimes called the mod arg form if it's being written in shorthand. The reason this is useful is because this one is talking about coordinates, whereas this one is talking about how far away from the origin it is and what angle it has moved around. And as you go through this chapter and complex numbers in year two, you will find how powerful that can be as a tool. So it says here, the modulus argument form of Z is R cos theta plus I sine theta, where R is the modulus and theta is the argument. Now, the reason this is useful, um, this little coordinate pair that I've written is actually a polar coordinate, where if you write R theta, this is known as a polar coordinate, and you're going to learn about these in core pure year two. So instead of the coordinates being specified by their x and y position, the Cartesians, they are specified by their distance from the origin, which is called the pole, and their rotation. And this is a whole other area, a whole other way of thinking about geometry in maths. So this is starting to link complex numbers to some other areas as well. But the maths behind this is going to be pretty straightforward. So first of all, we want to express this complex number in this form that we've got here. Um, again, you can do this in your calculator, but I'm going to do it the slightly slower way um, just to kind of reinforce some of the ideas. But you can use your calculator for some of the time, please. I wouldn't recommend doing it all of the time. As usual, I like to start off with a sketch. So it's minus root 3 plus i. So there is a number, it's going minus root 3 this direction, and it's i over here. So r is going to be the square root of minus root, sorry, of root 3 squared, which is obviously just 3, and i, uh, sorry, and 1 squared, which is just 1. So that's just root 4, which is 2. And theta, I'm going to be a little bit more careful about this one. Um, Let's actually call this angle over here alpha. And we know that this bit is 1. This bit over here is root 3. Now, you should actually be able to tell me what that is off the top of your head. But I am going to show you on a calculator. Try and have a little guess. You should be able to know. Um, oh, should you be able to know this one, actually? Um, yeah, you should. So we've got, we know that tan of alpha is 1 over root 3. I wonder if you can tell me what alpha is. So I'm going to do shift tan of 1 over root 3. 
alpha is pi over 6. But remember, we're not interested in alpha, we're interested in the argument. So the argument of z, which is theta, is going to be pi minus alpha, which is 5 pi over 6. Pi minus pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. So putting this all together, pulling the value of r and the value of the argument, we can say that z is equal to 2 brackets cos 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. Just going to quickly show you what happens. If you do the cos of 5 pi over 6, you get minus root 3 over 2. If you multiply that by 2 because of the r outside the front, you do get that the real part is minus root 3. And similarly, if I went back through all of this, whoops, I'm not sure I can get onto the previous one, you would get the same thing for um, for the imaginary part. The imaginary part would come out as 1. OK, let's try the next one. Looks similar, but it's slightly different, It's kind of switched around. So again, we're going to start off with a sketch. Minus 1 over here, and now minus root 3 downwards. So the modulus is going to be the same because pretty clearly you can see that you've got 1 and root 3 just like we did in the previous one. So the value of r is going to be equal to 2. We don't really need to do any further calculations for this one. Um, and actually we don't really need to do any other calculations but I'm going to explore this. Um, we know that this angle is the same as this alpha at the top so it's going to be pi over 6. But we'll do it the slightly longer way. Let's figure out what this angle here is, alpha. So we know that tan alpha is the opposite over the adjacent, just root 3. And so you should know this off of the top of your head. Alpha is going to be pi over 3, or 60 degrees, but I'll just kind of prove that to you. So we'll do the inverse tan of uh, root 3. We do get pi over 3. So if this is pi over 3, this angle here is going to be... 2 pi over 3, that's pi minus pi over 3, which is obviously just 2 thirds pi. So that tells me that the argument of z, which is theta in this case, is going to be minus 2 pi over 3 because it's going in that negative direction. So pulling all of that together, z is going to be equal to 2 brackets cos of minus 2 pi over 3. Notice how I'm putting the brackets around the argument there because there's a negative for the angle. Plus i sine minus 2 pi over 3 and then close off that bracket. So I'm just going to show you that again. I'm going to show you that the imaginary part is going to be minus root 3 by exploring what this is when it's expanded and multiplied by 2. So we're going to do the sine of minus 2 pi over 3. And I'll multiply it by 2 because of the r that was multiplying it by 2. And we do get the minus root 3 for the imaginary part. You obviously could go and check that with the, um, the cos part as well. So although it doesn't necessarily look that elegant, it's really clear to see that the length of the complex number is 2. And it has moved, rotated, minus 2 pi over 3 radians from the positive real axis. Okay, let's have a look at this one. This time they've given it to us in modulus argument form and we're going to want to put it back into the x plus i, y form. This one's actually really easy. You can just kind of type this into your calculator. So you can, just for the x part, you can just do 3 multiplied by cos of pi over 3. Now, I'm hoping you know what cos of pi over 3 is off the top of your head. Cos of pi over 3 is the same as cos 60. So you should know that it's just going to be a half. So if I do cos of pi over 3, you get a half. Multiply it by 3, and you get 3 over 2. And the y part is going to be 3 multiplied by sine pi over 3. You should know that sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, and it's going to be multiplied by 3. But I'm just going to show you that to prove it to you. So we're going to do the sine of pi over 3, and we're going to multiply that by 3. So we get 3 root 3 over 3, 3 root 3 over 2. So 3 brackets cos of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 is equal to the x part plus the y part i. Just to make that really, really clear, 
this bit, the 3 and the cos pi over 3, gives you the real part. And the 3 with the sine pi over 3 is the bit that gives you the y part that you've got there. Then it says here, the modulus of a complex number is 4, and its argument is minus 0.3 radians. Express the complex number in the form x plus iy, where x and y are real numbers. So it might be useful, actually, to try and translate it into something that looks like this. So if the modulus of the complex number is 4, and its argument is minus 0 0.3 radians, so we'll have the cos of minus 0 0.3 plus i, the sine of minus 0 0.3. So something I didn't do earlier is I mean I could have expanded this out, so I get 4 cos of minus 0 0.3 plus 4 sine of minus 0 0.3, and that's obviously going to be multiplied by i. So you get the real part and the imaginary parts. So what I'm going to do for this, because I don't know the cos or sine of minus 0 0.3 off the top of my head, I'm actually just going to type it in, making sure I'm in radians mode. So I have, for this beginning bit, 3.82, and the next part, which is going to be with i, will be 4 sine of minus 0 0.3. Oh, it's a negative, so I perhaps shouldn't have been so hasty with that plus, and it's going to be minus 1.18i, and I've done both of those two three significant figures. So although so far we've had lots of roots and things, it's perfectly okay to have some decimal numbers appearing in some of these things. So you can have a go now at exercise 2c on the modulus argument form.